Hey guys, this is somewhat surprising news. Maybe not super surprising, but JD Vance is a Magic the Gathering player and his kids love Pokemon. They love Pokemon. In fact, when he was getting the phone call from Donald Trump to announce you know, that he would be the VP, his uh, kids, his uh, seven-year-old would not start stop screaming about Pokemon and Pikachu. And he wanted to explain to his dad some more Pikachu facts. Now, why this is relevant today is obviously he's a Magic player. And in his autobiography, there is a... Again, I haven't read it. I heard there are kind of crazy stuff in his autobiography. I heard that uh, he had, like many others, was discouraged by his dad and his community from playing Magic. But he still plays it today. So J.D. Vance, in case you don't know who he is, he's 40 years old. He w went to Ohio State for his bachelor's, and then he went to Yale Law School, where he met his wife, who also went, went to Yale Law School. And that's probably how they felt they found each other and so on. This guy is a uber nerd. This guy is an uber nerd, and he loves magic. He still plays magic today which is quite impressive. I, I would definitely say it's something that I didn't expect to hear. I think most Magic players don't know this. That yes, indeed, there are play people who are very successful. I mean, he's the nomination nominee for the Vice President of America. He went to Yale Law School. His wife went to Yale Law School. They have, I believe, three kids, right? They're a very intelligent family, very, very accomplished family. And he plays Magic the Gathering. There are plenty of people who play. And they're, they're, you will never see JD Vance. I don't think you will see him at your local Magic store. But it doesn't mean he doesn't play Commander. I'm sure he's playing Commander. I mean, that does ever, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have a play group of individuals who play. Uh, I have a play group. Uh, one of them is the CEO of an energy trading company. Another one's a doctor. I'm a lawyer immigration lawyer in case you guys need some help there uh we office now we have a secretary things are going really well in the immigration lawyer front probably due to donald trump let's be honest you know let's call a spade a spade and i would even go as far to say that there are many many intelligent very successful people who play magic the gathering but won't tell you that they play uh it's actually his wife so we knew that he had played when he was a child, but no one knew that he continues to play today. Uh, it was his wife was saying, you know, what his what was an embarrassing hobby of his, and she was like, he's going to kill me, but Magic the Gathering. It's pretty cool. I know a lot of people won't like it. I know a lot of people are not going to... I know a lot of people aren't going to love the fact that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance is a Magic the Gathering player, but I think it's kind of cool. It does bring attention. I mean, again, he went to Yale Law School. It does bring the attention to the forefront that there are many educated, many successful individuals who play Magic. They might just not be very vocal about it. They may definitely not have a Magic YouTube channel or something like that. Magic is fine. You know, I... We talk about recession, and that's the overall sense. I think these smaller card games, like we're collecting Weiss now, and we've seen the, the price of Weiss cards go down so, so much recently because maybe there's partially something happening in Japan. Um, there might be a lot of these Japanese card games are just kind of petering out because the, I think the Japanese economy isn't good. They're reprinting and they're selling as much as they can to Americans. But magic is magic. You know, a dual land is a dual land. A black lotus is a black lotus. I never, would I view it as an investment? No, but I'm never too worried about it long term. I think long term, as long as you're not buying the meadow zoos and the flesh, and again, as an investment, I specifically say. There are higher risk, high reward games, of course. And then there are games that do really, really, really well when they first come out and not so well later. 
this has a lot of relevance, right? If your vice president, let's say he wins the election with Donald Trump, plays Magic the Gathering, is an educated lawyer from Yale Law School, uh, has kids who play Pokemon and may be interested in Magic later on, this has huge implications for a lot of uh, Americans. Right? Magic is mainstream as it goes. Like Magic is super mainstream. And it wouldn't surprise me if Donald Trump or some of his kids play Magic the Gathering. It's, it's done a very, very good job. Um, it's done a fantastic job recently promoting itself and, and so on. I'm not at all surprised. There are lots of educated, very smart people, very, very intelligent individuals who play magic. They just don't tell you they play magic. They just don't tell you or make a big show about it. They play magic in their play groups and that's it. You know, they're not going to play they're not going to publicly say they play Magic the Gathering or even privately say it. Um I I'm listening to like we have a pretty big choice. I think people understand that that there's a very big choice that has to be made in 2024 and we're either going to go this way or we're going to go the other way. So listening to people's hobbies, listening to what they enjoy to do in their free time. This JD Vance dude is a uber nerd. His kids are probably nerds. I mean, the one kid could not stop talking about Pikachu. He just cannot stop talking about Pikachu. And um, I, I was a little shocked, right? I'm, I, I look at his profile. That does, doesn't he seems to be like a Christian conservative type of individual, a, a marine? I, I don't necessarily. In fact, when um, when I had a play group at the Groovy Geckos when I went to law school, one of the main players that was really good was a Marine. He was an active mili it was active military. I think he was a Marine or what he, he was active military at the time in, in Virginia. There's a lot of military people. And he was a really smart guy. He was pretty high up in the military. He played magic. You'd be surprised, you know, who plays Magic the Gathering. You'd be surprised. It's not, you know, the homeless, or even though we have pictures of the homeless playing, and the homeless can play Magic the Gathering too. There's nothing wrong with that. So I should probably recant that and say it is the homeless. Uh, but it's also very successful individuals. When I met the uh, CEO of a company and, and learned, so there was that time I was buying that really large Magic collection of Summer Magic. I had no idea it was his son selling his dad's collection. His dad is a very famous athlete. That's all I can say. You know, they made me sign the NDA. I cannot say no more. Uh, we did eventually find a buyer. My friend bought half of it because he owns a $100 million company. He's the not a partner of the company. He just straight up owns the company now. And he bought a large chunk of that collection. And it was amazing. You would be surprised who collects Magic the Gathering or who has collected it. So it was uh, the dad had collected it. The dad's the famous athlete. The son isn't really somebody I know. I don't I think he was like not as famous, but he was an athlete and that's how, you know, uh he contacted me from seeing a YouTube video and saying, "Hey, I have this collection of Summer Magic. Uh that's what my dad collected. This uh, and my and I got to meet the dad too and he actually signed a few pieces. So I I had some I had a jersey, I had some cards for him to sign. And he was more than he was very kind and he signed it all. He met uh, and me and told, talked about his collection how he accumulated it, you know, he would travel from place to place and he would just buy packs of magic wherever he went. He would just go to his local game store. And most people didn't even know who he was until like much later. So he had just accumulated a ton of um, cards and he didn't even play magic. He just collected it. It's a fascinating story. I just can't reveal like, you know, his name or anything like, but it was really crazy. And then son is like, oh, I need, we need money. <laughs> we need to sell this thing. But it was a really fun experience. My friend got to experience it with me. Uh, he also bought a lot of memorabilia. Let's just say that, like, this dude is not what you would think a Magic player. But but it's, like, this great athlete who just collects Magic cards. And he, he just traveled all these places. And he he, buy, ma he just buys Magic cards for fun. He just buys Magic cards, stays in his hotel, opens Magic cards 
throws out the commons and uncommons and keeps the rare. And then when I was telling him about like how uncommons could be worth money, he was like, "Oh shit, man! I must have thrown out, you know, hundreds of temp uh, wastelands." <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's just a collector. He just collects the the card, and everything was near mint. So I was able to also buy part of his collection, which I have, and that's why I have two cop two near mint copies of every single card in Magic's history. Because I did buy that part from him. Anyway. Hi guys. Minus Alpha. Obviously I don't have Alpha or Beta. But I have unlimited. I have two copies of every single valuable card. In Magic history. And near mint straight out of the pack. Into a sleeve. Into a binder. Uh, and that's what I was able to buy. And that was what I was able to afford at the time. I really wish I would be able to buy more. But I am happy that my friend did get half the collection. The other half they just, just decided to keep.